Hello, I'm Dr. Christopher McGarra, and this is Dr. Pam Galloway, and we are the Doctors from Indiana. Today's topic will be free market solutions for medical care. This talk is based upon two reference works. One is a rather newly published book called Common Sense Medicine. That's Common Sense Medicine by the author Jeff Danby. There's a picture of the cover. This little 50-page book, it's an easy read, was published by the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons, otherwise known as the AAPS, and their website, aapsonline.org. The AAPS, which by the way, is an organization founded in 1943 to be the voice of private independent practice, also has published a white paper on the repeal and the replacement of the Affordable Care Act. It's a very scholarly work and you should read it. Now who is the AAPS? Well, this is the biggest little organization you've never heard of. The AAPS counts amongst its members, the Paul family, Ron and Rand, um, Pam and myself, and even Dr. Tom Price, who's now the new HHS secretary. So there's a lot of us out there in key places. And the motto of the AAPS is omnia pro agroto, which loosely translates from the Latin to all for the patient. Now you can find this white paper by going to the website, clicking on the Issues tab, then Healthcare Policy Roundup tab, then going to the Archives tab, then to the Policy Statements tab, and then up will pop the white paper. One of the biggest fallacies in medical care today that's being promoted is the fact that coverage and care are equal. Insurance coverage does not equal medical care. You can have perfectly wonderful medical care without insurance coverage. The other fallacy being bandied about is the fact that insurance is vital and it lowers costs. Insurance does not lower costs. Insurance does not lower costs. When you're spending other people's money, cost always goes up. Now, Everybody's got a complaint about going to the doctor or the hospital these days. It's just an insane thing. You, you, you can't make any sense out of it. So how did we get into this mess? Well, we got into this mess on July 30th, 1965. What happened on that day was LBJ signed into law the Medicare Act, otherwise known as Title 18 of the Social Security Act and Medicaid Title 19 of the Social Security Act. Now, Taking care of our seniors and our most vulnerable is a great idea. We should do it. We need to do it. It's the Christian thing to do. But like all government programs, Medicare has morphed into a monster that has become very dysfunctional and affects everyone, not just the seniors and disabled. And it affects them negatively. Before Medicare, we had a perfectly functioning system of cash, catastrophic insurance, they used to call it major medical, and charity. Medicare did away with all that. Fast forward to 2010, and you get the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare. Now, as is widely known, Obamacare was never about medical care. Never about medical care. It was about redistribution of wealth and control of the population. Redistribution and control. It does nothing about medical care costs. So how do we get ourselves out of this mess? In order to know how to get out of the mess, you need to know some basic economic theory behind medicine. So little lecture today is Economics 101 of Medicine. What I'd like you to ponder during this talk is whether or not medical care is a service or a right. Is medical care a service or a right? I think it's a service. Medical care is a commodity. I'm a gastroenterologist. 
I perform colonoscopies. That's a service I offer to you. Now, the economics of medical care is such that we have buyers, that's you the patient, and sellers, that's me and my colonoscope. Buyers and sellers, it's basic economics. What we have in this transaction is something called natural price discovery. Natural price discovery, that's the pure form of free market. But it is confounded by the rent seekers. Now those aren't the people renting the room over your garage. Rent seeking is something else. And we also have a phenomenon confounding this of regulatory capture. I shall explain. <clears throat> Natural price discovery. How much does this cost? Doc, how much is this colonoscopy going to set me back? And as a corollary to that, we have let's make a deal. I say a thousand bucks, you say, oh, 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 laugh that off, 500. We get together, we make a price, and that price is it. That's natural price discovery. You know going into that exam room what it's going to cost you, and I know what I'm getting out of this. So we have the sacred relationship of the patient and doctor. The patient-doctor relationship has been sacred throughout the centuries. Hence the motto of the AAPS, all for the patient. But that sacred relationship is now under attack by the rent seekers. The patient and doctor relationship is under attack by the rent seekers. Now rent seeking is a predatory practice. They're taking advantage of both of us. They're outsiders who siphon off value. Siphon off value. I have to spend money on useless things that I don't need to transact this healthcare business with you. They provide little or no value and are unneeded metalmen. Now in biology, we call this a parasite. And that's what these people are. Parasites. Sucking the life out of the relationship of patients and doctors. And rent seeking is backed by government coercion. Government coercion. Now, what does the government have? They have fines. They have prisons. They have lowest learner in the IRS. And they have the army and police. Kind of hard to argue with that. Rent seeking results in misallocation of resources, increased prices. You think that big computer system sitting in the office that I'm hacking away at was free? No, that cost is getting passed on to you. It creates shortages because I can't see as many patients in a day because I'm jumping through all these hoops leads to rationing. If you can't see patients, then you have to ration care. And it leads to confusion. What we have are that patients who are the buyers and doctors who are the sellers can no longer communicate. We're not even speaking the same language. There are many kinds of rent seekers getting into that exam room. It should just be you, me, and the colonoscope. But We've got insurance companies dictating to us what we can and cannot do. Drug companies getting into the exam room. Tech companies. Have you ever seen, you've been to your doctor's office and the doctor is staring at that computer screen and not looking at you. They're not looking at you. The government regulatory agencies are the biggest rent seekers. But now, as you know, the government can never know what is better for you than you. Only you know what is best for you. And that is what should govern the patient-doctor relationship. We have non-governmental organizations that throw in their two cents. All kinds of regulatory agencies on doctors, hospitals, licensing boards, and even the AMA. So my brother and doctors, we are not blameless in this. Our professional organizations are also rent seeking. There's also the hospital association. Large hospitals and systems are becoming monopolies, employing doctors and controlling all facets of the healthcare experience. Now just think to yourself, if a doctor is employed by some other entity, are they actually now the advocate for the patient? You think about that. 
Now, the rent seekers keep their power by a phenomenon called regulatory capture. Regulatory capture. In an ideal situation, the government is an impartial referee. Impartial referee. I know what you think about that. Now, what happens if you are a bureaucrat, you've got no experience in healthcare, you just happen to be a civil servant, and you've been put in charge of some facet of healthcare? Well, you need advice. So, who do you call in for advice? You call industry experts, who just happen to be the rent seekers. This, if you are one of the rent seekers, is a sweet deal. The bureaucrats are calling on you to help write the rules. Sweet deal. I mean, of course you're going to write the rules in your favor. So, money buys power. The fat cats and the bureaucrats feed off of each other in an endless cycle of mutual power enhancement. Bureaucrats want more power. They have to keep their jobs. And the rent seekers also want more power. Where does that leave you and I, the buyers and the sellers? We lose. We lose big time. Again, remember earlier I spoke about whether medical care was a service, a commodity, or a right. Let me talk about that a little bit now. We have what are known as natural rights endowed upon us by our creators. Life, property, freedom of movement, trade, and association. These are some of the natural rights. Now, if you're into philosophy, you know that rights cannot be given or taken away. They can only be violated. Violating your rights is something that our government is excelling at. Now, rights are not the same thing as privileges. People get this confused all the time, especially when we're talking about health care. Rights are not privileges. Only the owner of something can grant a privilege. Let me give you this little example. I can buy a cup of coffee. You can buy a cup of coffee. But you do not have a right to free coffee or to force me to pay for your coffee and bring it to you with cream. No. If I choose to give you coffee, that is called charity. Charity. The government always wants to confuse this issue. The government does not own medical care. They don't own medical care. I own medical care. Dr. Galloway owns medical care. So does every other provider. It's our business. We offer services to you, the patient. But Obamacare, the government claims ownership of both of us, patients and doctors, forcing us to do things in violation of our rights. Forced redistribution, it destroys value, and the vast majority of people end up poorer. Now, you go to a doctor's office for a solution. Make me better. That's what you go there for. Make me better. So, I'm not just going to give you a lecture. I'm going to give you now some solutions. Is the government the solution to medical care in this country? Mm, not so much. Consumers. Yes, consumers are the driving force in medical care. What we need is to go back to a system of what's called the three C's, cash, catastrophic insurance, and charity. Cash, catastrophic insurance, and charity. The problem with medical care in this country is the cost, not the coverage, as former Speaker Pelosi keeps harping on. Now, cash. Cash is king. You've heard that. Well, cash is king. Cash restores natural price discovery. What does this colonoscopy cost me, Doc? You know, I know, no surprises. Cash lowers prices. Everybody's competing. There's no monopolies. It's a free market. Cash increases access. Cash increases quality and innovation. Have you ever heard of anything the government does increasing quality and innovation? 
cash, cash practices, independent doctors. You do not accept insurance. Now, insurance is a good thing in its strict statistical function. But in order for doctors to have effective cash practices, they do not take insurance. That's for you and your insurance company to deal with. It's just you and me in the colonoscope, and we set the price for that transaction. Let me give you a couple of examples of how cash has made great strides here. In Indiana, there is a large Amish community, and, and I call this Amish care. Now, the members of the Plain Church, or the Amish and, and other sects, they don't believe in insurance. They pay cash. So I know this doctor in Indiana who has a cash-only practice just for members of the Plain Church, a.k.a. Amish. You walk into his office, the prices are stated right there. No hidden surprises. Everything is bottom line. He buys drugs wholesale, the common drugs, marks them up a little bit, resells them to the Amish. They pay cash. He doesn't have computer systems mandated by the government because he doesn't belong to any insurance or government plans. He's very efficient. There's no waste. It's all bottom line value care. We could all learn something from this. Now that's a primary care practice. Now what about surgery? You need a hernia, you need a colonoscopy, you need some surgical procedure. I refer you to the Surgery Center of Oklahoma. Surgery Center of Oklahoma, do a web search on that. What the Surgery Center of Oklahoma is, a group of surgeons who do not take insurance. They own the Surgery Center. All their prices are on the internet. You go there, it's a diagram of the human body. You click on whatever part you need operated on, up pops the procedure with a price. That price does not change. There are no surprises. It is the bottom line. The Surgery Center of Oklahoma has such good quality and pricing that they were recently given, well, let's say it's a contract, it's not really a contract, but the state of Oklahoma has made them a preferred provider for the employees of the state of Oklahoma because they save so much money. So here's a group of cash-only surgeons, which are so good, they have turned the world upside down. Now people are coming to them. We could learn from this. Health savings accounts, that's your money, that's cash. You spend it however you want. Now, insurance is a good thing in its pure form. There's catastrophic insurance and other insurance. Now, insurance should be customized to each individual need, not a government mandate. No government mandates. That only drives up cost. If you're a 20-some-year-old college student, your needs are different than a 64-year-old. So. Everything should be customized. You should just pay for what you need. I refer you to Senator Rand Paul, who has a bill before the United States Senate that deals extensively with insurance type reforms, making coverage more available to people. Premiums should be fully deductible because the little guy has to be treated just the same as the big corporation when it comes to the cost of health insurance. And it's not like that now. I'm sorry, Nancy Pelosi, but you do not need government exchanges to provide coverage. You do not need government exchanges to provide coverage. They boast about these 20 million some odd people that have health care. No, they don't have health care. They have coverage, and it's bad coverage. But my argument is that by using association health plans, health sharing networks, and high risk pools, and charity. You can cover all those people that worry Nancy Pelosi. We don't need the government exchanges. Let me refer to you an organization called the Council of Smaller Enterprises in Cleveland, Ohio. This was formed years ago, if not decades ago. I lived in Cleveland. I saw this take place. The Council of Smaller Enterprises filled a gap because otherwise you had individual coverage and you had big coverage, like if you work for the steel mills or something or the GM plant. 
but you didn't have anything for the pizza shop owners, the small mom and pop businesses, the mid-sized manufacturing. There was no group insurance. So the Council of Smaller Enterprises formed up and they said if you have two employees or more, you can join. And one of the benefits of joining COSI is that they contract with Medical Mutual of Ohio for insurance. Now you are a member of a group. You have insurance. Now if you're sick, it could cost you more, but you have insurance. I refer you to that as a solution. And then there's charity. Charity is for those who cannot afford the essentials of life. We should all be charitable. It's the Christian thing to do. There are private charities, like, oh, St. Jude's Hospital, the Shriners, whatever these things are. They exist on donations. We should ensure that all donations to charity are fully deductible. Rand Paul, in his Senate bill, also addresses charities and tries to increase their promotion. Now, we also have government charities. As I mentioned before, the biggest government charities, which you can term entitlements, but they're charities, are Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, food stamps, Obama phones, and on and on and on. And some of these things are necessary. We need to take care of these sick and unfortunate individuals. But you got to ask yourself, is the government the best mechanism for this? If you gave people cash, like in some uh, Medicaid plans, they give people health savings accounts, and then the Medicaid recipient can then use that cash to go to a cash-only practice or something like that and, and get the best value. So, these concepts can work even in government charities. Now, the problem with anything that the government does is it just metastasizes like an out-of-control cancer. So a good idea goes bad over the years. The problem is that you have to control the government charity before it controls you, which is what we have now. So to start to summarize, we have the concept of cash, catastrophic insurance, charity. We need an impartial government referee. Impartial government referee. No winners, no losers, no crony capitalism. We need to eliminate the rent seekers and the regulatory capture from that exam room. It's just you, me, and my colonoscope, period. Now, why are some people uninsured? Well, that's a good question. Some people don't want insurance. They don't want it, they don't believe in it, they just don't want it, or they don't need it. Okay? Many people are eligible, but not signed up. Eligible, but not signed up. You can't force people to do something, or, but the government thinks you can. Lack of group status. Again, there's the individual market, group market, all these insurance terms. But as I've showed you some solutions, you can increase the amount of people in the group market without government interference. Some people are uninsurable. You just have diseases that statistically make you uninsurable. Well, and there are people that simply can't afford it. We have solutions that don't involve the government for all of these things. So let me summarize again. Any health care or medical care reform in this country should be aimed at cost, <clears throat> cost of insurance, not maximizing coverage. We need to lower the cost. That will increase coverage because people can afford it more. First, you need to repeal, completely repeal the Affordable Care Act. Completely repeal, not tinker, repeal. There should be no new entitlements. No new entitlements. We can do it without handing out money. Because when the government hands out money, it's got to take it from someone. And that taking destroys the economy. There should be tax equality of insurance dollars so that the individual small group market is treated just the same as the large corporation with, for, with reference to taxes. We need tax equality. There should be no mandates on coverage. No mandates on coverage. Mandates only drive the cost up. 
We need to end the federal subsidy of Medicaid expansion. End federal subsidy of Medicaid expansion. Listen carefully to what I just said. Medicaid takes care of some very unfortunate and vulnerable individuals in our society, and we need, to, we need to provide care for those. But I feel it should be up to the individual states to determine what's best for them. Hoosiers will determine what care we give to Hoosiers. We're not worried about New York and California. Let them decide their own thing, and we will pay the cost of taking care of unfortunate Hoosiers. Federal government only wastes money. No more bailouts for the insurance companies. No more bailouts for the insurance companies. They were the ones who supported Obamacare in the first place. No more bailouts. No more crony capitalism. No more government chose winners and losers. We need health savings account expansion. Expand the number of things you can use it for, the dollars. In other words, that puts more cash into the cash part of the system. We need to allow seniors to opt out of Medicare on a per-service basis. Now, to most non-physicians, you're thinking about Medicare, what do I care about this? But I told you, Medicare started out as a good idea that has metastasized and is making all of medical care in this country dysfunctional. So we need to cut the cord. Medicare can be there, but it should be just another insurance plan. It shouldn't control everything. So, again, we have the principles of cash, catastrophic insurance, and charity. Cash, catastrophic insurance, and charity. Let me go to a final set of medical care reform solutions from the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons in their white paper. Again, this is a very academic-oriented discussion, but if you read this and then look at any bill coming out in Congress, if it doesn't have these things, then it's a bad bill. So it's a good reference for you. We need honest pricing. Doc, how much is this colonoscopy going to cost? We need honest pricing. We need honest reimbursement. Your insurance plan should state what they're going to pay for these different things. It shouldn't be a mystery to be determined at the time of incident. Tax fairness, as I said before. The little guy needs to have the same tax appropriate as the big corporations. We need to remove barriers to competition. Remove barriers to competition. We need to promote independent doctors, cash-only practices. We need to promote surgery centers of Oklahoma everywhere. That's what's bringing down costs. But there are people out there who don't want competition and lower costs. They like monopolies. We need association group plans, health sharing uh, groups, and again, I'll refer you to Rand Paul's bill for a summary of these types of novel uh, insurances, which will cover more people, and then Nancy Pelosi can go to sleep at night comfortably. We need to repeal the insurance mandates. All of them, gone, gone, gone. Insurance is custom. Now, here's where it gets a little bit arcane, but we need to repeal the antitrust exemption for the business of insurance. It's really in the weeds, but trust me, it's important. We need to enforce the antitrust law against systems and hospitals. What's happening is slowly is these big corporations are starting to form big shares of the market, and at some point it's going to be just like the old-fashioned trusts that need to be busted up now. We need to repeal the HMO Act. This is really arcane, but the reason that's needed is because what we need to do is to promote casualty insurance, casualty insurance, payment for an incident of illness. And that can't be done as long as this HMO Act is floating out around there. We need fair trade and non-discrimination with reference to the independence and systems. Everybody can have services out there, but I shouldn't be inhibited because I'm offering a better service and somebody's upset about that. So we need to remove barriers to self-funded plans. This is another insurance rule, but take it from me, it needs to happen. We need to streamline the regulation and licensure of facilities and providers. You have to make it easier for doctors and surgery centers to practice. You can't make it harder. When you make it harder, the costs go up. Choices go down. 
And this is a little subtle thing that I was going to talk about, but in this United States, what we have is one form of medical care. You have no care or you have the Ferrari level. And if you liken this to retail, we've got nothing or Saks Fifth Avenue. We don't have any Walmarts or Sears or Pennies in between this. Medical care only comes in one flavor. So I think that we should utilize all our licensed personnel, such as nurse practitioners, physicians assistants, all these associated providers, to help provide cost value services for that level of care. You can always move up the ladder if your case becomes complex, but not everything has to be taken care of by the highest priced provider. So again, what we need to replace the Affordable Care Act with is not more legislation, but freedom. Replace it with freedom. Thank you.